Good morning, True Grace Church family. Both of those here in person and watching online, uh, welcome and thank you for joining us for this gathering today. You know, go Hawks, but go God first, right? Let's go God first, okay? Let's do that. Hey, if anybody's had a rough start to the year, this first song is going to speak right to you, okay? We're still standing, right? We're just getting started, but we're still going. So let's bless the Lord. Let's praise Jesus. Stand to your feet, please, and sing with us.
fight There is one who's stronger Heart pressed on each side You lot lose sight Of the one who's greater One name, one name Holds every victory One voice that silences the enemy oh, One king who reigns for all eternity oh, Jesus, Jesus On the battlefield Your power is revealed Giants fall One name, one name holds every victory. Come on, church. One voice that silences the enemy. And one king, one king who reigns for all eternity. Oh, Jesus.
Father, you are worthy, worthy, worthy. There is none like you in all the earth. Cross you bow so I could live in the free. yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus you deserve worthy is your name worthy is your name
deserve all glory, all honor, and all praise. Father, high and lifted up are you in our praise. You are worthy of all of our adoration, worthy of all of our worship, worthy to handle and to carry all of our weaknesses and worries. You are our Father, you are our God, and you are our guide. Would you just keep your eyes closed for just a minute? I know I'm not supposed to act like I was listening to you, but I love, love to hear you sing. And a few moments ago, I had this moment when I thought, I love to hear you sing. How much does God love to hear you sing? God doesn't care that we're perfect. God doesn't even care if we're able. But the one gift that we give to God is our worship. Jesus. Would you just take this moment and sing to him? It doesn't matter what you're saying. It doesn't matter what words are coming out of your mouth. Honor him. Step outside of your insecurities, step outside of any judgments of yourself or others, step outside of the things of the world. Father, in the name of heaven, right now, your sons and daughters are leaning into this beautiful moment with your presence. And the simplest things we can say is worthy is your name.
Father, when we make ourselves small and make you big, there is something that happens and we're so grateful for it. All of a sudden, the things that we carried in, we've dropped. And we get down to the simplest moment where we sing of your goodness and you fill us with your peace. So Father, right now, let us not forget this moment. Let us carry this moment with us. And as our worship has prepared us, let the word that is about to be spoken be really landing on fertile ground. There is none like you in all of the earth and all of heaven rejoices of your goodness and your greatness. So Father, let your will be done on earth like it is in heaven here today. We thank you that we can come into your house and worship you in the spirit of truth. We don't take it for granted and we're grateful. We give you all honor, all praise, and all glory. Would you say with me, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. God loves you so much. If no one has told you that recently, or if you're coming in and even in this moment, you're going, yeah, maybe them, maybe them, they look super holy, they look spiritual. That girl up there looks crazy, but she might be all right. God loves you. If you're here this morning and you're coming back to the Lord, I promise you that God is waiting to say welcome home. Would you turn to your neighbor? Would you tell them you're glad to see them this morning and love on them in the fellowship of the house? Good morning. If this is your very first time here at True Grace Church, we want to say welcome. Um, there is a Next Steps card in the seat back in front of you after the gathering. If you want to take it out the double doors to our guest services, we want to exchange it for some information as well as a free gift just to say thank you so much for checking us out today. And if you're engaging online, you can fill out that Next Steps card as well on our website. It's a new year and it's a great time for you to get plugged into a great community. We have life groups that are starting here pretty soon. And so if you're interested in finding a group of people to do life together and to have some amazing conversations with, swing by the table in the lobby or you can also look it up online. And if you have kids in second through fifth grade, we have a one day conference for them. It's gonna be February 11th. It's gonna be life changing. Check out our website for more information. Have a great day. Good morning. Wow, that was a powerful worship. Am I right? And you guys, I was here last gathering. It's going to get better. The message is amazing as well. But I want to talk to you guys about giving today. I know that we have a lot of new people with us, which we're very excited about. So I want to go over the ways to give first. Um, if you're here on campus, there's an envelope in the seat back in front of you. It actually lists all the ways to give. And you can drop that in the giving station that's in the back. If you're joining us online or if this is more um, convenient for you, there's also a give tab on our website. And it's like two steps. You can click it. You can give. You can designate it if you're giving above your normal tithe to an offering like missions or um, something like that. And then there's also banks bill pay. I don't know if you guys use this. This is my preferred method. This is what our family does because the nice thing is when you set it up through your bank's bill pay, there's no credit card fees attached. That means that every dollar that you give goes straight to ministry. Now that we've covered the ways to give, I want to talk about why we give. The Lord has called each of us to give, to give our first and our best. And when we do this, we get to partner with one another on God's mission. What really... Um, Lord was speaking to me last night was, he doesn't need us, yet he chooses to use us. He wants us to be a part of what he's doing. And when you guys give, that allows us, all of us, to touch lives that we would un be unable to touch on our own. There are kids that walk through these doors that they know that they are loved by God and they are loved by this church. There are students who get to get life spoken into them, hopefully helping preventing them from having scars as they grow up. We get adults, we get to speak life into people. We get to meet tangible needs in our community and around the world. 
You guys touch people that you will never meet until you get to heaven. And that is because of your generosity. Would you guys pray with me? Lord, we thank you so much that you allow us to be a part of what you're doing, God. You are so gracious and so good, and we are so thankful. I pray that you would pour out blessing upon blessing of all of these people, Lord, who choose to put you first in their life, who choose to honor you with their finances. God, we pray that you would just anoint the rest of this gathering, that your voice would be heard loud and clear, God. We thank you in your precious name. Amen. I'm Beverly Levy, and I'm excited and honored to be here to tell my story about about my Jesus. And January the 18th of 2006, I found this pressure on my chest. I got really short of breath, and I started to sweat profusely. I said to the Lord, Jesus, I'm in trouble here. And then he gave me the song immediately that Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And I didn't have enough air to sing that, but I said it, I sang it to myself over and over. And I immediately called 911. So I'm laying on the couch, the paramedics were nice, they came in and they got there right away. And um, they had trouble putting the IV in my arm. Turns out my veins had already collapsed when they got there. The trouble was I had no vital signs. I had no registered heartbeat and no registered blood pressure. All of a sudden I'm at the ceiling and I'm looking down at myself, laying on the couch. And the thing I wanted to share was that it was peaceful. There was no panic, there was no fear. It was just all peaceful. The whole time, I had no vital signs. I could still see, I could still hear, and I was still conscious, and I was still singing my song, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. So I get into the the ER, and again, I'm looking at myself down. I'm at the ceiling, I'm looking down at myself. And the doctor's name, seriously, in the ER was Dr. Angel. So if you're having a heart attack and you have no vital signs, it's good to have Dr. Angel taking care of you. And I had two, two totally blocked arteries, so once those were opened up, then I could breathe again, and it was like, ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. And I, all that time, I just kept singing the song over and over in my head. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. So it wasn't for Jesus, I would have died that day, because I was more dead than alive. So it's a week later, I'm home in the, uh, my house, and. I'm laying down in my bedroom and my little 18-month-old granddaughter comes. She's in college now, but she came over and I gave her a hug and I said, oh, Grandma's angel. And she says, angels flying. She says, can you see the angels flying? I said, no, honey, I can't see the angels flying, but I'm sure glad that you can. I didn't feel well, but I knew I was going to be okay because my little granddaughter saw angels flying in my bedroom. I've been alive almost 17 more years, got to see more grandchildren be born, got to see great-grandchildren, and I'm just so fortunate because without my Jesus, I would not be here to tell my story, and I'm very, very grateful to Him. And my prayer is that this, when my story would encourage someone's heart and give them hope. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? It arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. That's how 
purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Doesn't that look good? I've taken that Alpha course twice and asked some really good questions that kind of make you think. And even better than the videos themselves, which are maybe 25 minutes, is the discussion that happens before and after uh, with groups. And so we're offering Alpha again. We probably weren't going to offer it like a lot. And so there are four adults that are going to be offering Alpha together uh, for adults that want to take that class. And so if you're interested in growing your faith or maybe you're not sure about your faith, but you have some questions and want to discuss some things, this would be a great opportunity to take this course. You can sign up at the... Uh, in the, in the lobby at the table for that. Also, there's a youth version of that too, and a great thing for young people to kind of wrestle with some of the questions. So um, some of our gals are going to leave one for youth also uh, for, for that. And then we have a teammates uh, ministry starting. It's a marriage ministry on Sunday mornings, uh, February 5th. That one's going to start. So if you want to sew into your marriage, because marriage is easy, and... Um, I always tell everybody, I want every tool I can possibly have in my tool belt and other people. So this is brand new marriage ministry started. We've been praying for that. And so we have some people that have stepped up uh, to make that happen as well. And there are a ton of other life groups. So if you want to join a group uh, with some other people, maybe a Bible study, um, I don't know what it is, Alpha, teammates, you figure out what it is, but, but do something. Listen, this is going to be my 25th year as a pastor. And what I know is this, <laughs> that happened last service too. I feel like I'm, thank you. Uh, the reason why I say that is because the longer you're in ministry in the church, the easier it is to get a been there, done that attitude, yeah. right? Like, oh, none of those groups. I've probably grown past any of those groups. And I'll just, you know, like, you just get that mentality. And I hope that as you grow in the Lord, you're always open to the new thing that God wants to do next. And every January, I'm challenged with this thought. You know, a year from now, some people in our church, they're going to be the same they are today. Or maybe even stepped away from God a step or two. And how am I going to be growing spiritually this year and stronger and deeper in God? Well, it's not going to be haphazard and it's certainly not going to be unintentional. It's going to be focused, right? And so I want to just challenge you. Be determined that you are going to grow spiritually no matter how long you've been in church or how much you think you know or don't know. Make sure that you're growing spiritually and you're hungry for more of God in your life, all right? Also, I just want to say, uh, Beverly Levy, thanks for sharing your story. That was so powerful. If you have a heart attack, it's great to have a song in your heart, a doctor named Dr. Angel, and more importantly, Jesus with you on that journey. So that was cool, and you're a blessing. I thank you for that, all right? All right, um, before I forget, make sure you pray for the Seahawks and against the Packers today. <laughs> if, if you're not a football fan and you have friends or family that are football fans, you can do this. You can text them even right now and say, you know, I really hope that the Seahawks beat the Rams this afternoon, and then I hope that the Packers lose to the Lions tonight, because then the Seahawks go to the playoffs. And you'll actually sound like you know what you're talking about, <laughs> all right? And you don't even have to quote me on that, so um, that's for fun as well, all right? So the message title today is, What is God Saying to You? What is God Saying to You? This is a question I ask myself a lot. I ask friends and family, uh, my life group, my staff. What, what, these are the questions. What is God saying to you? Because it's a provocative question. Well, is God speaking? Does God speak? And if he is, what is he saying to you? And if he's trying to speak to me, am I listening and am I getting it? There's a lot of the questions that go with that. So today, I want to start with this title that's a question. And I'm going to bring up probably eight or ten other questions. But here's my hope. My hope is that I might bring some questions before us today, but my real hope is that God will ask you one particular question today that might really sink in and you might hear from God on something he wants from you or wants to ask of you. So before we go any further, can we just stop and pray for a moment? That helps me out so much. Jesus, you lead this church. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would hijack the teaching so it would not just be man's wisdom, but it'd be from you. God, we desperately want to know your voice, and we want to grow in you, 
And we really don't want to just be church people or casual faith people. So God, help us to press in and to hear what you want to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, here's, a, here's the first question I want to bring to your attention today at home and wherever you are. Um, is this, do you believe that God wants to talk with you? I don't want to assume that you already believe that because you're in church or you're listening to a church gathering somewhere in the world. I mean, this is an interesting question. Do you believe that God wants to talk with you? Because maybe you don't. Maybe you're like, well, I think he used to, but he doesn't like me anymore. I don't know what your answer to that question is. But I believe 100% that God wants to speak to you. And I think he desperately wants to be close to you. I mean, that's what I get out of the scripture, that he wants to talk to you, and even crazier, he wants you to talk to him. And sometimes we say, well, God already knows everything about me. He knows me better than I know myself. True, but he also wants you to care enough to get to know him. See, relationships go both ways, right? Um, Though he is almighty God, creator of the heavens and the earth, I believe he wants a, a deep friendship with you. He wants a deep friendship with you. Like he's got a lot going on, but he still prioritizes you. And he doesn't want a shallow relationship with you. He wants a deep friendship where you talk together about the hard things and the real things of life. Listen, it doesn't matter if what everybody else says or what I think. The question is, what do you believe? Do you believe that God really wants to talk to you? Um, Moses, one of the leaders that would speak for God, said in in the Old Testament, He said, if you will listen, he's speaking to the people, Moses says, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, not necessarily the world's sight, but if you'll do what's right in his sight, obeying his commands and keeping all the decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent on the Egyptians. Hallelujah. And I am the Lord, your God, who heals you. The part that I think is so powerful uh, from God is this, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God. There's no assumption that you will. It's an if. You get a, it's a conditional response that you get to answer that question. If you will listen to, carefully to the voice of God. And it is something that we have to dial in for. So a follow-up question would be this. How badly do you want to hear the voice of the Lord? I mean, how badly do you really want to hear God's voice? Here's the reality. Many people, and I'll go a step further, many Christians get used to being disconnected from God's voice. Many Christians become accustomed to being disconnected from God's voice. It often happens slowly, but at one point it just becomes normal that I'm not hearing God's voice. I'm no longer feeling the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what God wants me to do. I'm I'm having a hard time dialing that in. Listen, don't get comfortable being disconnected from God's voice. He desperately wants a relationship with you. So let's desperately want to hear his voice. In Acts chapter 17, it says this. Um, Paul's speaking to, the, uh, to really a bunch of unbelievers, and he's explaining his concept of God to foreigners. And he says, from one man, God made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and their boundaries of their lands. And then he says this. The reason why God did all of this, why he created this world and all these people in it, is so that they would seek him, they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. How badly do you want to hear God's voice for your life? If you want to hear God's voice, I think you have to dial in to clearly understand him, to hear him more. Now, in the old days, before there was digital radio tuners, if you're under 40, this is going to be weird, all right? In the old days, you actually turned a knob on a radio, and this little bar went right or left. And so if you were, like, looking for, like, 93.7 on the stereo, you had to turn a knob and move the bar down to about 93 points. But usually they were off a little bit, so it would look like it was, like, 94 and a half, but it was actually 93.7. You know what I'm talking about? How many of you did this? It's kind of a weird deal. And so, um, you know, you, you kind of have like static, static. Oh, you catch a station, static, static. You catch another station, right? So I brought in this, uh, this stereo that's over 40 years old. And it didn't really work last service. But I'm going to try it again for you, okay? And so um, I'm going to turn this microphone and see if we can actually catch some static. And I, I'm a little bit rusty, and so is this, uh, this stereo. So it may not work at all. You may hear a little bit of static. I don't know what you're going to hear. Right now it says like 99.9. Somebody yell out a good radio station. Oh, you heavy metal listeners. I know you're out there. Country people. 
All right, let's see if we can pick anything. This is, this is FM. All right, do you, you think the antenna might help? <laughs> I was getting there. I was going to get there. Maybe there'll actually be some sound now. You know, I really thought it'd be fun is if I turned this on and Baby Got Back came on by Sir mix lot I thought that would have been a, a hilarious, inappropriate moment in church, but it didn't happen. All right. Yeah. I, I'm young. I mean, I can't figure this out. All right. Oh, here we go. So I'm going right. Actually caught some of the stereo right there. So, so, you know, you'd catch all this static, and then you'd kind of dial in, and you'd catch a station, and you keep going, and you wouldn't catch anything, right? How, you remember that. So young people are like, this is dumb. Why don't you just type in the exact number you want to go to? You know, up, down. Why don't you just listen to it on Spotify? What is this goofiness, right? The, the fascinating thing with the stereo, and I better shut this off because it might come on suddenly, is you would have to dial right or dial left, and there'd be some static, some static. You'd kind of hear the station. Sometimes you'd hear a little bit of the station. You'd keep going. You'd go quiet again, and then the same station would come back on a little bit further down the road, right? And then if you didn't have the antenna up, you couldn't hear it as well. So listen, we actually went to uh, kept stereos on, like, windowsills, and we sucked the antenna out the window <laughs> so we could, like, catch the radio station. I hope this somehow makes sense of this sermon, but... <laughs> But the reality is this, like sometimes we hear God's voice kind of, sometimes there's kind of some static, but we don't really take the time to fully dial in and then turn up the antenna and really just kind of, okay, God, I'm really here and I really want to know what you're saying. And I don't want to kind of have this halfway. I don't want to kind of kind of hear what you're saying. I want to know what your heart is for my life. I want to dial in to your presence in my life. I want to encourage you to be that person that does that. People who want to hear God's voice, they do certain things. The first one is this. They, they read the Bible. They read God's word. I mean, if you really want to hear God's voice, you can't go, I want to hear God's voice, but I'm just not a, I just don't read, right? Or I just don't read the Bible or I don't know where it is or whatever like that. Um, listen, the Bible is the number one way that God speaks to his people. People died so that we might have a Bible, they had to fight the religious leaders so they could say, could we get the Bible like in a, in a language that, that regular people could hear and not just priests read it to them? And people lost their lives over this. Uh, in certain countries, they, they can't get the scripture. If they get the scripture, they have to hide it. If they have it downloaded on a phone, when someone knocks on their door, they actually uninstall it from their phone in case someone's coming in to check their phone to see if they have a holy Bible on their phone. It's crazy what's happened in the world. And we can have the scripture with us at all times. And yet so often we kind of go, I don't, I don't really read it much. I want to challenge you to be a person who reads the Bible because those who read the Bible hear God's voice more than those who do not. The psalmist said it like this, your word, O Lord, is a, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And it's true. When we read God's word, it opens up, it lights things up. I was away this week for three days praying. I do it every January. I try to do it every summer as well. Got away to a house where some people said, listen, this is so cool. I found some, uh, a couple that said, hey, um, for missionaries and pastors, we have a guest house. It's $25 a night. Just come and be blessed. Isn't that cool? So some of you have some great money. Go do a ministry like that. I think that'd be fun. So anyways, they did that, and they invited me to their home, and I was praying and reading the Bible and praying for you and praying for this year, and asking God for his voice, his plan for my life. And I've been reading in uh, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings. And after a while, you're reading about some of the kings of like Judah and Israel. You're like, man, these guys are idiots. You know, they're assassinating people, and they're becoming kings at a young age, and they're, they're worshiping idols, even though God's told them not to, and it's over and over. And I said, you know, I'm going to read the proverb of the day today, because I haven't read that for a while. And man, I'll tell you what, when I, when I try to focus in on God, I am easily distracted. Anybody else? I have focus issues. I think they make drugs for people like me, but I'm not on them, all right? <laughs> And so I, I went to Proverbs 4 because it was January 4th, and I was reading, and I come across this verse. I took a picture of it and sent it to my wife. It says, don't get sidetracked. <laughs> I was like, oh, I knew God was going to speak. I knew it. There it is for me right there. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Listen, distractions are everywhere. If it was easy just to walk through this life and hear God's voice, everybody would do it. But you got noise everywhere, and you got competing voices everywhere, and you got the devil coming against you, and your flesh coming against you, and the world coming against you. And life is chaotic, and for you to slow down and hear God's voice and know what his plan is for your life, that doesn't come easily. That comes because you prioritize that. You spend time in the scripture. A man went to his pastor, and he prayed about getting a job. 
A month later, the pastor saw the man in church, and he asked him if he found a job yet. The man said, no, I haven't even found a job. I haven't even got a single call about a job. And the pastor asked him, well, how many jobs have you applied for? And the man said, well, none. (laughs) And the pastor said, how do you expect to get a job if you don't apply anywhere? And the pastor might also say, how do you expect to hear God's voice if you don't read the Bible? It's just kind of a, duh. This is how God has chosen to speak to us. And when I was at this uh, prayer retreat for, for a few days this week, I made a task list. Some of you are task-oriented. I said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to clear out some emails. Uh, I'm going to work on this message for this Sunday. I'm going to stretch. I'm going to read a book, another book. I'm going to get close to God, and I'm going to uh, proactively affirm 10 leaders that I know. And then I decided, you know what? This, this one, get close to God, this one needs a giant box next to it. Because if I affirm leaders and read books and pray and clear out emails, but I don't grow closer to God, it's a wasted time. Like, some, some, there's got to be a priority in your life and mine that I want to be closer to God than I am today. Because if I'm just satisfied with where I am and I'm going to coast, it's ugly. If I don't hear from God for the church, it's really ugly. But don't get away with saying, well, pastor, you got to hear from God because you're a pastor. No, it, it's ugly if you don't hear from God. It's vital to your life. Because if you're a parent, you need to hear from God. If you're married, you need to hear from God. If you live in western Washington, that wonderful, biblically-centered like, part of the world... <laughs> You need to hear from God, or you're going to do something stupid and embarrass us all, right? (laughs) It's vital that you hear from God, and yet you're not distracted, and getting closer to God is important to you. All right, let me give you another one. Dreams and visions. God speaks through dreams and visions. Sometimes God, many of you, you've, you've said God's spoken to you through a dream or a vision. Sometimes I have a word picture. I'm not asleep. It's not necessarily a dream, but a, a word picture in my mind. I want to tell you about one that I try to tell this story every couple of years in our church. There was a Saturday night service. I preached the message. I came down to the altar after the message. It doesn't matter to me who preached the message. I still want to hear from God, whether it was me or somebody else. I went down to the altar. The room was twist, turned the other way. I, I, I knelt at the altar. I said, God, what do you want to say to me? I really want to know what you're wanting to say to me specifically. And this phrase pops into my head. It's not even like for me at all. And here's the phrase, walk closely by my side. I was like, probably Christians should do that. So, okay, walk closely by your side. Got it? Covered. Now, what do you really want to say? Let's go deeper than that. Silence. I got to tell you what, I got up off my knees, and I was like, walk closely by your side. That's like Christianity 101. I learned that when I was seven. Like, it just it, it didn't have a lot of power. And I went home and went to bed and got up for the next morning for Sunday morning service. I went and prayed by my fireplace. I'm sitting in a chair. All of a sudden, I have a word picture in my mind. And in this picture, there are thousands of wiry, wiry, dark, evil beings, hordes of them crumbing at me at, at like an incredible pace. They're just rushing at me. And, and swords and spears are just, they're coming. It's just like, it's like no way to avoid them. They're coming so fast. But in this, in this vision, I guess it was a vision, there, there was this giant muscular arm with this huge shield. It wasn't like a, a shield like this. The shield was almost like head to toe. And all the arrows and all the spears were hitting the shield. And they were getting stuck in the shield. They weren't making it through. Here was the amazing part. I looked down, and in this vision, I see myself, and I'm tucked in behind the shield, walking closely by his side. And all of a sudden, I thought, Last night makes sense. Oh, that wasn't just a cavalier word. Walk closely by my side. Do you know what it really means? It means you're protected because you're close to God. And if this is the shield and you go, you know what, God, I want to I walk with you, but I want to do my thing. And you, you end up out here and then you get scars and you get shot up and you get hurt and you get wounded. And you're like, God, where are you? And he's like, would you walk closely by my side? Would you stay behind the shield? You know what was incredible about that? Is the shield eventually became a weapon, and these things, these beings, these evil spirits were being thrown by the shield uh, at, at, at an incredible pace, and I was safe and protected by his side. Listen, church, walking closely by, by God's side, it is a benefit not to God, it's a benefit to you. If you decide that you want to have all your sin in your life and all your fun, but you still want a little bit of God, you're going to end up getting chewed up and spit out, and you're going to go, why? Walk with the Lord. Life's better behind his shield with his strength. It was a vision in my life, and I'll carry it for the rest of my life. Number three, God speaks through prophetic words. Um, Sometimes God speaks through a message. Sometimes God speaks through a friend. 
who has a word for you or a thought for you. After the service, someone uh, uh, said something to me that I'm going to pray about that I think might be a prophetic word and a good word. Um, God speaks through prophetic words. One time a friend said to me, walk in the authority that God has given you. I was like, man, I'm hanging on to that. One time our founding pastor, Dan Seekers, came up to me at a man camp event. Put his hand on my shoulder. He doesn't remember it, but I do. And he said, God's word to you is charge. Not to stand still, not to retreat, is to charge spiritually ahead. I held on to that word, right? God speaks through prophetic words. Number four, God speaks through circumstances in your life. Ask God to speak through the circumstances. Ask God to move and shift in, in your life and have things happen. Maybe other people make decisions and you go, well, that's another person's decision. God can work through circumstances in your life. I had gone through one year of community college at South Puget Sound. After one year of college, I was bored. Um, I, I applied for a, a job at a physical therapist's office to be a, an assistant or an aide to a physical therapist, just kind of ground floor, working my way up. Maybe they'd help me pay for college and go be a physical therapist. And I began to get excited about that. My mom had told me, God says you're going to be a pastor. I said, that's sweet, mom, but I don't know about that. And so I was, I was making a decision. Am I going to go back to a second year of school, finish my AA, and then go on to like Bible college? Or maybe this other route is a way to go because I'm just kind of bored in school. And I began to really take seriously the opportunity to be a physical therapist assistant. By the way, if I'd become a physical therapist uh, instead of a pastor, I'd have a whole lot more money. And um, I wouldn't just be good looking. I'd be rich as well. So I think that would be kind of cool. <laughs> but that didn't happen. And this is why it didn't happen. I got a letter in the mail. And the letter said this. You're, because of your grades and your financial situation, we're going to pay for your entire year of school, your books, your parking, everything. And I said, God, maybe this is a circumstance that you're trying to keep me to stay in school. And so I, I called up the other place. And I said, I'm not going to come work for you. I'm going to stay in this job or stay in the school. Eventually went to Northwest University and became who God called me to be. God moves through circumstances and speaks through circumstances in your life. Number five, uh, put yourself in places where he is present. Come on, this is your choice. You get to dis decide about this. I want to challenge you, go to the altar. Go to gatherings uh, of the church with expectation. If you're a young person, go to the upcoming winter camp so God can speak to you in your life. God's going to shape more than one young person's future there. Join a Bible study. Join a life group. Go on that retreat. Go on a mission trip. If there's a worship night at another church in town, go to that worship night. Put yourself in places where the Spirit of the Lord is moving. Go to that prayer meeting. If you have a place where you walk or you sit or there's a place you used to go and God spoke to you there, go back there and spend time there listening to God's voice in your life. You know, it's fascinating. Um, while I was praying this week, I found out we had four memorial services in the first two weeks of January. Uh, people have passed away and related people in our church. And so we have all these memorial services. We get one yesterday, two next Saturday, one we're planning as well. And what I found interesting is this. Though those are heavy moments and hard times, there are also places where God speaks. God moves. And it's actually kind of a joy to be in places where we're talking about eternal things. We're recognizing somebody's life and we're thinking about our own. And we're asking God to talk to us. Listen, uh, put yourself in places. What is your place where you hear from God? And maybe you need to press into some of those gatherings and those moments, those groups with God as well. And then number six, God speaks through leaders through prophets, through teachers, pastors, evangelists, elders. Uh, God speaks through others in your life. Make sure you have others in your life that, that can hear from God and speak to you. So here's a question for you. What helps you to hear from God? I mean, in your life, what helps you to hear from God? Reading the Word, spending time in worship, praying, journaling, being in an environment conducive to God's presence, going places that God has spoken to you in the past, Erring on the side of action. And when God, you feel like a prompting of the Holy Spirit, let me just tell you, if you go, you know, that might be God I want to act, you train yourself to respond to those promptings of the Spirit. But when you go, I'm not going to do anything because I don't know about that. Don't, don't train yourself, don't train your mind not to respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Another question, what inhibits you from hearing from God? Children? <laughs> That just popped into my mind. That was not for anybody here, all right? <laughs> what inhibits you from hearing from God? Sin, busyness, been there, done that attitude. Man, it's my prayer that everybody 70 and up in this church is hungry for God, wants, wants God to do something new in their church and in their life, in their group, in their family. 
God has been speaking things to me. I write them down. I remember them. There was a time I went to a conference. I said to my wife the night before in the hotel, I said, I think God's talking to me and not just pastoring the church, but at least attempting to pastor the city. So just be a pastor in the grocery store, coaching kids in soccer and pastoring other leaders in town, caring for other pastors and leaders. The next day, the conference speaker gets up and he said, God doesn't want you to just pastor your church. He wants you to pastor your city. I was like, I'm pretty sure that was you, right? God said to me, don't preach for people, preach for me. That's helped me a lot. Here's a strange one. It's very unique to me, but I don't know, maybe somebody else. Overthinking and trying to optimize everything ruins joy. Any overthinkers in the room? It's not our fault. We have to make up for the underthinkers in the room. (laughs) But I can try so hard to try to make everything perfect that it just kind of takes the joy out of it. (laughs) I was in a three-day time with the Lord this summer and uh, there was a lake that I could walk to this paddleboard. <laughs> I don't even know if this will make sense to anybody else. But I was planning out when I was going to pray on the paddleboard in the middle of the lake. And I was planning my afternoon and I was looking at the forecast. And the forecast was 72 to 76 degrees. Hallelujah. Right? And I remember uh, the words coming out of my mouth. Peter, there's not a bad time to paddleboard today. You can go any of those times. Don't sweat the details. Don't overthink it in your life. Maybe I'm not the only one that God wants to say, don't overthink and don't try to over-optimize. It's nice to hear God's voice. So what do you think Jesus wants you to do? I'm certain there's already, already one or two things that you know the Lord wants you to do. You've already known it before you listen to this message. But I have two questions for you, and I think they're heavy. For this week at True Grace, for everybody who hears this message. And the first one is this, what do you need to let go of? If you're going to be who God created you to be, what do you need to let go of? Like a hot air balloon tethered to the ground, sometimes you got to untie those ropes and go soar and go forward and be who God created you to be. But there might be something holding you back and God wants you to let go. And here's the harder one. Not just what do you need to let go of, but who do you need to let go of in order to be who God created and called you to be. There's a myth out there that says nice people never leave anyone in their past and move forward with their lives. And it's not true. Healthy people, nice people, godly people have to leave others sometimes in their past in order not to be hindered but to move forward in who God created you to be. And I wonder if there's an unhealthy relationship, a distracting relationship. Who do you need to let go of? I want to just give you some time to pray and think and ask this question. What are three things the Lord is speaking to you? If you have a paper and pen or you have a phone app or something you want to write that down, I think it'd be amazing. It's vital that you hear the voice of God, not just for you, but for your friends and family around you. It would be incredible to be a church where the vast majority of people are hearing the voice of God for their lives. I'm telling you what, it'll set the church on fire and it'll touch the city as well. So I'm going to ask if you would just maybe just wait on God. Maybe God's already spoken to you this message. You need to just clarify, Lord, here's one thing I know that you're saying to me. or Here's three things I know that you're saying to me. I knew this when I came in today, but now I've got another thing. What is God trying to say to you? So we're just going to have a couple minutes maybe just to, just to wait in God with some music, and then we're going to sing a song, and then I'm going to come and close this out. If you want to... Stand if you want to come kneel at the altar. You just want to just take some time to think or pray. Would you just listen for the Holy Spirit's voice? We've been praying this week that God would speak to you right now. So it's a great time to slow down and focus in. Dial in on God's voice. So let's really bow. Let's really seek his face.
Let's bow our heads and pray together, can we? Lord, today our faith is not worn out, but it is renewed. And Lord, we want to hear your voice. And God, I thank you for speaking already. God, for the person who needs the courage to break off an unhealthy relationship, Lord, remind them, show them the rewards are so much better. God, don't let us be disillusioned. Don't let us be deceived. Lord, help us to understand what a treasure the scripture is in our lives. How important it is that we gather with others. God, give us a hunger to know you more. With some of us that have just haven't been ourselves, God, bring us back. Renew us, restore us. And renew that right spirit within me. God, we pray that today would be a new day. Your voice would be louder, clearer, that we'd be pursuing you more than ever. God, that we'd show up at church and you just begin to speak. And God, we just marvel at your presence. Lord, we don't want to waste time. Time is of the essence. So God, for young people today, let them hear your voice and let them pursue you and shock their parents at the depth of their relationship with the living God. Lord, for the older generation here, let them be the ones that are most excited about what's next, open to change, looking forward to what's new. God, create a hunger in your people for more of your presence and more of your voice. Let this be a year in our lives we look back on and we marvel at what you have done. And God, speak and continue to speak. And Lord, remind us to write down, to hang on to, and to not forget the words you're speaking to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Aren't you glad you took time to be in church today? Man, if you want to stick around and spend some time listening to God, you can. Just pray. There's also that table out in the lobby. Sign up for something that's going to help you grow in God and make some friends, all right? God bless you. Have a great day.